Hello everybody, Manix here. Got another tabletop knife review for you right here, right now. Feel free to subscribe, hit the little bell notification button if you do not want to miss any future knife reviews, gear reviews of all sorts, EDC videos, flashlight reviews, gun reviews coming soon, etc. Thank you so much for watching. Let's get right into the review. This is going to be on the CRKT BT Fighter. Really cool knife. Overall, I like it. Really short version of the review if you don't have the time. It's good if you really like the way it looks. It's worth the money. It's not the best knife ever. I do have some critiques here and there, but overall, I am a fan. I think it's cool. You're definitely going to have to like Tonto's for sure because it just screams Tonto. It's got a big old wide Tonto blade right here. Pretty extreme. Overall, though, everything's executed fairly well. Probably give it a B. Out of the gray going F. What happens after a F, D, C, B, A? Wow, that's hard to go backwards like that. But if you want to get into the details as to why I don't love it, I don't think it's the best knife ever, continue to watch. Yeah, again, not, not a bad knife. It's cool. I like it. Let's get right into the review. We're going to start with the specs first. Retails at $79.99. However, you can get these currently, as I'm filming this, mid-late 2022, all day long for about the $55 range. So it's a sub-$60 knife, just above $50. Bucks. Blade length is 3.64 inches. 8CR13 MOV blade steel on there. It is stone washed. Again, Tonto shape. Big old dual thumb studs on there. Also a flipper knife, if you didn't notice that. That's also cool. So we have multiple ways we can open and close this knife. There's actually three ways. If you have a trained eye, you'll know why that is. Handle length is 5.15 inches. Overall length coming in at 8.88 inches. This is a GRN handle right here, glass reinforced nylon. Same thing as FRN, if you're familiar with that. It looks like we do have some flush mounted steel liners in there, although they don't take up the entirety of the surface of the inside of the handles, just a portion of it. It's kind of an alternative to skeletonizing a liner, I suppose, and so they just take up some of the knife rather than the whole thing. Who knows why they did that, but it does help with structural integrity, I'm sure. FRN tends to be a little bit soft. It bends a little bit if it's thin enough, and I'd imagine this would probably have some issues, so they just threw in some thin steel liners in there and nested them in there. Not too bad. The weight, how much does it weigh? I actually am not sure. I didn't see any specs on the website regarding weight. Maybe they did, but I completely glazed over it. But I do have a scale right here. Let's find out. 4.86 ounces. So it's not a lightweight, but it's certainly not a heavy knife either. It's a decent weight for its size. Some people have like specific rules where they don't buy knives that are over 3.5 ounces. Yeah, this is a little bit heavier than that, but it's really not a big deal. You're getting a big old broad, stout, stonewashed Tonto blade right here. Check that out. I mean, as soon as you see this knife, whoop, that's the first thing you notice. That's the first thing I notice any, anyway. Is just this big old menacing Tonto blade. They're great for piercing. The second tip right there is good for slicing if you're trying to open up a package or do typical EDC stuff. It absolutely is useful. Uh, the ta the Americanized Tonto shape like you're seeing right here anyway is also very good for scraping and gouging and doing prying, twisting, really like, hard work. Tontos are actually pretty good at that. Some people think the Americanized Tonto is useless. I disagree. It has its uses. Overall, maybe it's not as useful or as easy or user-friendly in comparison to a clip or drop point, understood, but they certainly have their uses. And for tactical use, combat, impact cutting, piercing, they're great. They really shine at that. So, But mainly, I just like the way they look. At the end of the day, a knife is a knife, a blade is a blade, as long as it's got a decent blade still on there, a decent heat treatment. I'm fine with that. It'll still cut stuff. I'm a-okay. But it, it, it's a functional blade overall. It's very comfortable. I love these double finger choils we have right here. We have kind of the Cold Steel Recon 1 thing going on. We have two finger choils near the blade. I think that's great. Little on the smaller side. I have large size hands right here. But it, 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 it's just comfortable enough. It is comfortable. There's a lot to grip onto it. You can really lock in there. I like the overall shape of the knife. It's pretty extreme. A versatile knife would be basically just like a rectangle. There's no choils or cutouts or anything like that. An extreme knife would be nothing but choils and a lot of checkering and stuff that's supposed to fit your hand perfectly. So it's not a very versatile handle. It's pretty specific. It looks like it's designed to be clenched in this exact position. Reverse grip carries just like this, pretty comfortable up to my thumb right here. I wish my thumb was longer for this. Slightly not too comfortable there, but very comfortable if I'm doing that. This grip right here, it's actually okay. It's not as uncomfortable as it looks, even though this is piercing into the palm of my hand. It's actually fine. So despite looking pretty extreme, the handle is relatively versatile. So you can grip it in multiple 
positions, despite what it looks, again. As for the handles, I like the sort of layered look. It's not my favorite or anything, but it's, it's kind of cool. It's something different. I like the layering on here. I like this checker pattern. It would just look nice and close here. It's basically just specific cutouts in the handle. It kind of looks like carbon fiber inlays or something from a distance, which is kind of a nice touch, actually. It looks fancier than it really is. It's just a design thing in the FRN. Doesn't really add much for grip or anything like that. I like the spine right here. The backspacer, anyways, FRN, curved ridges. Interesting. It's not my favorite design or anything, but it's kind of cool. I like when knives have some sort of design in their backspacers. So that's kind of cool. Uh, let's talk about the pocket clip real quick. So here's something I don't like about the knife. Um, so I'm into interesting, weird pocket clips. Most of the time, I like it when they do weird things, as long as they're functional. And this one is... Um, but I just don't like how obtrusive it is. This really extreme Y shape. Why is it shaped like this? I don't know. It's just, it's very bizarre. It's on these two standoffs, it looks like. And it looks like it is swappable to the left side. But I haven't tried it. You'd probably have to finagle it a little bit and take these pins out and swap them there. I, I haven't tried it, but I'm assuming it's swappable. But it is lopsided. So maybe if you did that, it would curve the opposite way. I, I'm not sure. I've never tried it. But it's just... It's kind of float. It's interesting. Usually a pocket clip, it stands up, it plateaus, and then it bends down. This is literally just a flat piece of steel with what looks kind of like a ball bearing in there. Metal ball bearing, I'm assuming. I don't really know what it is. The tension's actually good. The pocket clip carries very well. Actually, I don't have any problems with how it carries. I don't have any problems with how it extracts, despite it looking so bizarre. I've never seen a pocket clip like this with a ball bearing here. It's, it's, like a, it's such a weird design. I don't hate it, but it's kind of weird how they slapped it on this knife that otherwise is kind of just kind of a cool tactical combat looking thing. And then we have this bizarre pocket clip on here. I don't know why they went with it. It's not the worst thing ever. I just don't like it. I would have liked something more standard. I just don't like how obtrusive it is. It looks like things can easily get snagged under there. I know it's not going to happen, but it kind of looks like it. And especially right here, this big old wide lanyard hole. It's a massive, massive triangular shaped lanyard hole right there. And that, in combination with the pocket clip, also the Y shape accommodating for that. That's a nice touch and all. You can actually fit something through there. You won't have any trouble getting a paracord or anything through that, but that also means other objects that you do not want to get in there also will probably not have too much trouble trying to get in there either, if you understand what I'm saying. But I'm going to assume you cannot swap it to the left side. I mean, maybe you could, but it's going to curve the wrong way because it's a lopsided pocket clip. I don't know why they didn't just go with something standard because we have dual thumb studs right here, which are ambidextrous. Flippers, obviously, are also ambidextrous. doesn't matter if you're left or right-handed. The button lock is not. It's only on the left side. However, you could, I'm sure you could still get used to that if you were a lefty. I'm not a lefty. Or I'm, I'm not ambidextrous, but you could just use your index finger to disengage that. It's not a big deal. I don't know why they did this. So CRKT, you blew it. I'm sorry, I love you guys. Love your knives, but you really could have done something better with the pocket lip. Not just for its design's sake, but also something that would be ambidextrous. But you didn't do it. So sorry. You were close. You almost had a, a, a home run right here. Not the end of the world, though. Sorry if you're a lefty and you really wanted this knife. It's not the most lefty-friendly knife, but regardless, it carries okay. Whatever. Pocket lip, it is what it is. It's stone wash at least. That's kind of cool. It's just weird. I don't know why they went with that, but I still carry it. I still love the knife anyway. It's on the IKBS ball bearing system, which every single knife should have. In fact, this is the weird kind of IKBS where they have it embedded within the washers. I don't know why that is. So sometimes some of the IKBS will literally just be ball bearings on a track in between the washers. I didn't take this one apart on camera or anything, but the ball bearings are embedded in the washer, which I think is superior because if you do take the knife apart, the ball bearings won't roll all over the place and you won't lose anything. It's actually just in the washer. It's much harder to lose a single ball bearing embedded washer in comparison to a bunch of loose ball bearings on a track. So that's good. I don't know why they don't put that on more of their knives, but regardless, it's extremely smooth, extremely fast, no wrist movement needed whatsoever flicks out and locks every single time. I like how there are three methods of deploying this. Thumb studs, we have the flipper, and then we have the button lock itself. That's probably the trickiest way because you have to give it a bit of a flick, but once you get the technique down, it's not the end of the world. It can rebound on you. Just keep that in mind. Just got to be careful with it. But we have three ways to deploy this knife, which is really, really cool. Extremely versatile as far as deployment goes. I love button locks. I love side actuating locking mechanisms. This one's pretty simple. 
that's how it works right there. It just obstructs the tang of the blade when it reaches a certain point. That is also it retains the knife in place. It's not going to come out on you very easily because there's pressure on there. So it works okay. I don't think it's terribly strong though. There's not a whole lot of material contacting right there. And if you slip this at just the wrong angle or if you put a lot of pressure on the spine there, I could see that probably disengaging. You need a lot of strength, but it's not the strongest locking mechanism in the world. How does it compare to a liner lock? I don't know. Could be a little weaker, could be a little stronger, not sure. But overall, it's very simple. I don't mind it. It's fun to play with. That in combination with the IKBS system, this is all makes it hella smooth. It's like butter, super smooth. That's another advantage to this knife. It's comfortable to hold. I personally think it looks really cool. It's affordable, you know, not too heavy or anything. Cool blade on there, by the way. And then we have a very fast, versatile deployment. Now, here's another issue. So the big issue I had with it was the pocket clip. It's not the end of the world or anything, but it is an issue. I'll just bring it up there. And another issue is the lockup. I'm not terribly impressed with it. Listen to this. Okay, well, you can't even hear it now. I actually had to edit this knife a little bit myself. I tightened out all the body screws. I tightened out the pivot screw as much as I could without making it too tight. That actually helped get rid of some of the up and down. But there is a bit of up and down in there. And I've used this knife quite a bit. I've been deploying it, open and close, open and close, open and close, carrying it, using it, using it, using it. And it's still kind of in there, so it didn't just have to be broken in, I don't think. It's not terrible. It's just a, it's just a little bit of up and down wiggle. There's no side to side. I have adjusted that out. But it was much worse out of the box. It was actually making noise and clicking. But when I tightened everything down, it actually reduced some of the up and down play. Why that happened, I'm not sure. But there's just a little bit of wiggle in there. You can see a teeny tiny little stop pin. And then the pin below that is the button or plunge lock, whatever you want to call that. So not terribly impressed with the lockup. However, we have a nice guard right here where the flipper is that extends the finger choil, so to speak. So it, it's not going to disengage on you terribly easily. You're not touching that locking mechanism at all while you're holding it normally. We do have some jimping up here, which is surprisingly functional. It's not the sharpest jimping in the world, but it's not useless either. It does have some functionality there if you're into that. I do like this cutout we have right here, nice and rounded. That's actually really interesting. You might look at that and be like, what's that for? I think it's for the fat of your thumb. But aside from that, it's also, if you're flipping it, it's something for your index finger to kind of slide into with a little bit less resistance. It doesn't really mean anything, but it's a nice touch. They also put that on a couple other of their knives, CRKT did anyway. That's kind of a nice little touch, I like that. Like a little cutout bowl shape right there. Just something for your index finger to slide into, and something for your thumb to rest on. And then we have the jimping up here if you want to use it. Again, love the stone wash blade. It's a really cool looking Tonto. There's a handful of different things you can do to Tonto blades. This one has a bit of a more obtuse angle when it comes to the tip as well as the secondary tip down here. Sometimes I'll have the tip like up here, you know, an even more squared off look. It'll be a less obtuse angle. This one's a little bit more obtuse. The more obtuse the angle, the closer it will get to a drop point style blade as far as performance goes, even though it's still quite different. But if you understand what I'm saying, I like how wide and stout it is. And I do like how it's not that extreme of a design, but it almost looks like there's a cutout right here in the handle in comparison to the cutting edge. I mean, your fingers, if you're trying to cut something on a table, you can almost barely do it without your fingers getting in the way, but it still kind of does a little bit. But the overall design, the handle's just slightly canted above the edge until you get down here. So, 8CR13 MOV blade steel. We're all familiar with that by now, I would assume. If you're new to knives, this happened to be like the second knife review you ever watched. Thanks for watching, by the way. Um, it's a cheaper blade steel, but it is adequate. It gets razor sharp, really, 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 really sharp. It doesn't hold an edge terribly long, but it's easy to touch back up, strop, keep it maintained. So it's actually an adequate blade steel. It's the same stuff they use on the Spyderco Tenacious line, a very popular, affordable line of folding knives. It's on a lot of knives. A lot of CRKTs use it, a lot of Kershaws use it, some cold steels use it. Lower end blade steel, but it's really, really sharp you can get it extremely sharp, so don't be fooled by it. And again, you keep the cost down with it. Again, $55 knife, less than 60 bucks. 60 bucks is probably gonna be the higher end for this. Is it worth that? Eh, eh. You know, I think it is worth it. There's better knives as far as performance is concerned. You can get just, just a little bit for a little cheaper. It's a fun knife to fondle with and play with. It, you know, it's not terribly expensive, so you won't feel too bad about doing some harder work with it. 
Is it good for tactical use? Yeah, sure. You know, it flicks out really fast, and it's grippy enough. It's not, like, really textured or anything, but it's not, like, slick either. And you have a lot to hold on to ergonomically when it comes to the shape of the handle when you actually have it in this position. It's not the longest knife in the world, but it's not a short knife either. I would consider this a medium to large... Eh, medium large, if not straight up, just a large size folder right here. Again, one of the big advantages to it, one of the biggest selling points for me anyway, is this button lock. I love side actuating locking mechanisms. If you're into the Spyderco cage ball bearing lock, if you're into the Benchmade access lock, the SOG arc lock, it's kind of like that. It's a more simplified, probably weaker version of those, but it's sure as heck probably a lot cheaper to develop. And it, it has a similar feel to it, too. You can open and close the knife without touching it. That's really fun and cool. A lot of people are into that. And again, I love the versatility of opening the knife. I'm just constantly cycling through and interchanging and different methods of deploying it. So it's comfortable. Not too heavy. It's not too light, either. We have an okay blade still on here. For the money, it's completely adequate. I love the blade shape. I love the stone wash finish. Ergonomics are good overall. I think it is a cool looking kind of nasty angular combat looking knife It's not the strongest in the world though. We have somewhat of a weaker locking mechanism. We don't have the greatest lockup That's kind of disappointing. Um, I've seen cheaper knives have a better lockup than this one. So I'm not exactly ecstatic about that Carries okay, but that pocket clip is weird It's kind of a it, it's a cool knife. I like it. It's not my favorite. I don't hate it a little weird But it's cool you know, I'll keep it for a while. At some point, I might trade or sell it or something. Again, love the Tonto on there. It's a cool-looking knife, you know. Some people are going to take a look at this and go, like, ew, what is that? But some people are going to take a look at it and go, oh, that's really cool. I want one. If you really like the way it looks, just get it. It's not terribly expensive, and it will perform for you overall. It's not the greatest performing knife, but if you really like the way it looks and you're kind of sold by that button lock, I think you're going to be pretty happy with it. So there you go. That's the BT Fighter.